25 summers, like the content, subscribe to the page. So let's talk about weapons in prisons. You know, um, do outside weapons get into prison? If so, how? And do the guards sell weapons to prisoners? Have you ever heard anything like that? All the above, yes. Guard will sell a, brig, will sell a prisoner a, we a weapon, especially if he know him or he knows a family member of his by way of looking out and protecting him. Yeah, they'll give him a weapon. They'll give him something that's real, something that's not being man-made, manufactured in a facility like a weapon, like a, a razor, double-edged razor, or a knife, a real pop knife, a knife that you can fold and close open. You know the difference between the real weapon and the manufactured weapon, and the officers are the catalyst of it because they're the ones bringing it in. We definitely can't. Uh, how else are we going to get a real weapon in a facility unless we assisted and aided by the officer? So how much would an officer sell an inmate like a $20 knife on the street? How much would he sell that to an inmate for? At least $100, man. He would definitely make 100% profit off it, $100. But being that you mentioned in the weapons, the, the whole key to the front of the weapon thing was, uh, at, and not too long ago, before I came to prison, it wasn't even no weapons involved in the prison system. There was nobody getting stabbed or anything like that. That all came about because... It was like, again, it's a race thing. The Spanish people, the Puerto Rican people was the one that started the weapons in the facilities. They started melting the double-edged or single-edged razor in a toothbrush and using it as a weapon. Why? Because they couldn't fight with their hands. Mostly all the brothers that came from the, in the penitentiary by way of Brooklyn were nice with their hands. Guys from the Bronx were nice with their hands. And if it went down, there was a thing in there in jail called five minutes. Five minutes was a knuckle check in the corner in the day room. If you can fight, if you win, you get your phone time. If you lose, you lose your phone time. If you lost a pair of sneakers because somebody gave you a call out and had a fight. When it was time for the Puerto Ricans to step up the bat to show proof their manhood by way of fighting, plucking with the hands, they couldn't do it. So this is what they did. They devised a plot. They started breaking the razors. They give you the shave once a week and melt them into a toothbrush and then sneakily or uh, without a sudden move, they will cut you. And being that a, a brother seeing his blood bleeding for the first time from him is enough to make him get frozen and all of that, man. And that gives the Puerto Rican the one up. But they're the ones that started the razor. That's the coward thing, because if you ask me, the fist of cuffs was the way to go. This was the way to prove manhood, not stabbing somebody, hitting somebody. So they introduced that, and blacks just took it to another level. I also understand that people use other things and weapons like human waste, oh, man. Yeah. feces and urine and things like that. Um, yeah. Care to elaborate on that? Savage acts, man. And this come, this started in Southport. This started in the 23-hour lock-in. Whenever you locked in your cell and you got enemies that's living around you and you can't get to them and fight, these people sat back and devised a plot by reading these books and using biological warfare, thinking that biological warfare was feces, and they'll start defecating, holding it in the tube, holding it wherever, and then when you walk by, they will throw it on you. And they will throw it on you, man, and it was another way to dehumanize you, because who wants anything thrown on them like that, feces or urine? So it was okay with the police, because they got a kick out of it, because it was prisoners doing it to prisoners. But when the prisoners started throwing it on the officers, then they took media action now. They made that a felony to throw bodily fluid, waste, or urine on another officer. That was an assault in the second degree. He was automatically took in the outside court and prosecuted. Tell us about people using baby oil as a weapon in prison. Okay, baby oil is is a or is a oil water solution, right? If you heat it up, it's the same thing as cooking oil. It'll boil. Anything that'll boil that's a solution of an oil is hot enough to melt the skin off of you. So now if you heat it up in your hot pot, which we all have, and you put the baby oil in and you heat it up and it starts boiling, and you catch somebody off guard and you fling it on them in their face, it's enough to actually peel the skin off your face. So yeah, baby oil is a dangerous weapon in a penitentiary. Okay, what are some other items you've seen people get assaulted with in prison? Whether it's mop buckets or what, what, what's, what's some other yeah, things besides the traditional, I'm sorry to cut you, mm -hmm. razors and knives and baby oil and human waste like? 
What are some other things? You know, old school thing, man. You get a sock and, you know, put a few bars of soap in it. You know, it becomes a weapon. A lock in a sock becomes a weapon. You know, anything that you can muster up in your hands, they can be sturdy enough to go upside somebody's head and inflict the most bodily harm. It's considered a weapon. Yeah, but the basics, those was the basics. There was too much outside of that. So you mentioned that the Spanish people, you know, invented using the razors with the toothbrushes and all that. But what would you say is more common in prison? People using weapons inmate to inmate or people fighting? What would be the more common thing? Do people get stabbed yeah. more or do people fight more? Which one is it? The more common thing is, well, the, our brothers would rather have a fist fight and get it off that way, man, because, you know, with the weapons, it's a whole different degree of, of assault, uh, an assault act. But the ma majority of times, it's all weapons now, man. It's basically all weapons because this was a this was a way of letting everybody know that you really couldn't fight. So you had to grab a weapon and use a weapon instead of, you know, giving yourself a chance to do the old-fashioned way to fist the cuffs, you know. So now, nine out of ten fights in the penitentiary are weapons being used upon each other. Okay, with all the weapons in prison, I understand they have metal detectors. I understand they used to have an old system, then they mm -hmm. went to something new. Like, um, how do people avoid detection if they're walking around the prisons with weapons? How do they avoid these metal detectors when they have to go through them? Or like, how does this work, that process? Yeah, many people, many people uh, 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 take these weapons, a razor, a ice pick or something like that, three, four inches of ice pick or weapon and put some electric tape around it and they will insert it in their rectums and they insert it in their ass and then they get to wherever they're going. They will go somewhere in the corner and defecate the most disgusting thing you ever heard, but they call it survival of the fittest. You know, I call it a savage act from a savage person, you know, because there's guys who was there defecating public and they'll defecate shit the razor out and use the razor on an inmate and all of that, man. And they hide them in their rectum cavity. This will make the officers force them to get a new system. They can detect these weapons being transported throughout to the facilities and to the yard population. So now from the odometer, they scrapped that program and they went and got this thing called a boss chair. A boss chair is a, is a chair that can pick up metal. That's even if it's hidden in your rectum, it's hidden. You swallowed it wherever you is because the chair is uh, something you sit down on. And when you sit down on it, man, it's going to register the same frequency as if you was to walk through an odometer. And they had to add this to the system now because guys got too smart, man. They knew how to get through an odometer with a weapon, man. So they came up with the boss chair. A lot more sophisticated and caught a lot more inmates in the act. So where is the boss chair located at? Near the metal detectors or is it in the medical office? Like how No, they 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 station and they position the boss chairs in areas like on your way to the yard. Like, okay, like if you had to go through an odometer, the boss chair would be right there in the corner there. Just before you got to pass that to get out to the yard, you would have to sit down on the chair. If you sat down on the chair and the red light went off, you wasn't going absolutely nowhere. You was going to the firmary to a, to a strip cell where you was going to be under isolation until you can perform a defecation and give up the weapon that's being hid within your in your body or inserted in your body. So then you're charged with it after then, that. Exactly. You're being charged with that. Yeah. Nine out of ten times, they're going to get it. Once they get it and you give it up, then you're being charged with it.